All right, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for making the time and attending this. Uh, before we start, can everybody hear me? Can somebody give me an okay or a thumbs up in the chat, making sure that the sound is good? Beautiful. All right. So, how to thrive as an agent in a post settlement world? And look, and look, this is um, this is the thing. Throughout, what when I started in real estate, when I started in mortgages, I obviously it's it's a uh, it's an industry that's full of people that have done it for a long, long time that are old like Scott. And you know, I used to hear, I used to remember that it was it was very it was very hard for me that every time I went to a meeting or every time I went to some type of talk with, with the people that I worked with at the time, they would all start saying, I've been doing this for 30 years and I've been doing this for 20 years. And I've been, and that was a badge of honor that everybody carried. And that was something that I felt like, man, what can I say if I haven't that had those 20 years of experience and those 30 years of experience? And, and I need th that experience in order to be able to justify why somebody it's in a better position using me or is a better position with me than with somebody else. And I remember that I went to a conference once and the speaker said, how many of you have been here for 20 years or have been working for 20 years? And you know, everybody was like me and proud of it. But then he asked, how many of you have actually been evolving and changing and transforming your business for 20 years? Or how many of you have been in this business for the first year, 20 years in a row? And that completely changed the way that I look at those 20 years. Because the truth is, a lot of people in the industry have not put the work in transforming themselves. And for years and years, and sometimes for decades, have really not made a significant change in their business. And I made it my goal at that point that in a very short amount of time, if I develop the right capacities to make those switches when the market needs it, I am going to be the person that's in a much better position than somebody that has developed bad habits for 20 years. And, you know, once you go into something, especially in an industry like this one, with that mentality, you see how things that are change and things that are scary for a lot of people and things that are not status quo actually open up a ton of opportunities. Because one thing I can tell you, this market gives you a lot of changes. In the last three years, we or in the last four years, we've had COVID, we have rates at an all-time low, then we have rates at the highest they've been in the last 30 years, then we have people that are absolutely, everybody understands that buying uh, buying a house, it's the number one thing that everybody needs to do, and now everybody's afraid of this, and the election cycle, and wars, all of these things are things that allow you to take these changes and take this chaos and use it to your advantage to actually show why you in this particular moment are the best person to work with somebody. So the reason I tell you this is because, look, like we did last time with the buyers, <clears throat> this change, it's change. It's happening. Okay. And it's up to you if this is going to be something that you're going to take to your advantage and you're going to transform yourself again and go into buying and listing presentations and say, this is why in this market, I am the best person for you, or you are going to be the person that's just going to complain and moan about these things. So that's the mindset that I want you guys to, to come into to this, because we're going to talk about things that are tactical about what we need to do in order to be successful with this. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of the conversations that people are having are simply the wrong conversations. I think people are talking about, you know, they're they're scrutinizing every word and giving detailed legal definitions of it um, and descriptions of it. I don't think that does anything to help us. They're talking about, they're complaining and bitching about, oh my goodness, 
woe is me, there's obviously nothing productive that comes there, or everybody's guessing and pontificating on what's going to happen in July. Down, look, the hell of all of that. The question is simple. How do we use this as an opportunity to be better? How do we use this as an opportunity to gain more market share? <clears throat> I shared in last week's presentation that the biggest growth years of my life happened during the crash. 2010 to 2015, I raised my volume from 5 million a year to 25 million a year, but only after my perspective changed from what was me to there's probably lots of opportunity. And that's what we want to share with you today. So let's talk about what's changing. Look, here's the deal. Anytime you're a listing agent and you get the opportunity to double dip a deal, woo, more money. This is great. This is what everybody works for. Well, that's the way it is today. That is not necessarily the way it's going to be tomorrow, okay? The way it's going to be tomorrow for a lot of people is you're going to be double-ending a deal, which is going to mean the same money, but potentially double the work. So this is a major thing that we want to go through with you guys today is how to avoid the new traps, how to make sure that we're not wasting time, we're maximizing efficiencies. How do we make sure that we're not losing buyers? How do we make sure we're not losing revenue? And how are we dealing with the more competition? Because here's the deal. Every buyer's agent I know is now talking about, hey, I really got to focus on listings. I have no option. So you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have more competition. What does that mean? You got to stand out even better. Look, in the mortgage space, we've been selling our value prop for years. But as a real estate agent, you've either not been doing it at all or you've been doing it less because it was pretty widely understood in the real estate industry that if you're selling your house and you massively cut down the commissions, that it's going to impact things. So it was just not really done. Um, so, and what are the action steps? The action steps is what we're going to spend the rest of our time going over. First and foremost, guys, we got to control the narrative, okay? There's a lot of, there's a mountain of misinformation out there. We have to make sure we're controlling the narrative. We have to go over the value prop on your listing presentations. We have to elevate that listing value. And really important, we got to talk about post-closing, maximizing efficiencies, and then the personal branding has never been more important. I want to talk about that a lot today. So, <clears throat> okay. So what's the first step that everybody needs to take? Mm -hmm. The first step that everybody needs to take is we need to control the narrative for all of those listings. And look, this is a very interesting step. 72% of home sellers in 2022 <clears throat> also plan to buy another home, right? Obviously, so they're going to buy another home. But only 46% use the same agent to purchase. That's crazy. That's less than 50% of the people that sold the house use the same agent to purchase the house. And that's before this whole commission thing. So look, the first thing that everybody needs to do is the same thing that everybody needed to do with the buyers is you need to call your sellers, you need to call your potential listings, and you need to be the one who controlled the narrative. The way we see this is if a seller, a potential listing that you will have calls you to ask you these questions, it's too late. You need to hit ahead. And when you call them, you need to have two things very, very clear. You need to have a lot of clarity on this. What is going to be your script if you're going to tell them that they should pay the buyer's compensation, the buyer's commission? And what's your script if you want to tell them that they shouldn't? What's your alternative? What is your plan? And look, this is where the person with a plan wins. And make sure that you talk to them for things that matter. If you're talking to somebody that's about to list the house and you want to convince them that now is the right, that they need to pay for the buyer's compensation, tell them why and not just tell them, well, you know, it just is the right thing to do. They work very hard. No, tell them how it's going to help them selfishly. Tell them how it's going to hurt their pockets. So for example, stats. Tell them that statistically, a house that sells with a buyer's agent that without a list that, that without a buyer's agent sells for more, right? Tell them like look for those stats in your specific area and give them those stats. Mm -hmm. The other thing that a lot of people need to do a better job on is explaining what kind of market we're in. And look, this is this is something that messes with people's mind because all over the country, it's a heavy heavy sellers market, right? There's only about 2.5 months of inventory. 
But it, here in Southwest Florida, depending on where you're looking at, the market is shifting between six months of inventory and eight months of inventory, which is not a seller's market. So it's important that if you're trying to get your seller to pay for that buyer's agent commission or to at least offer it, you need to tell them, look, maybe this works in a market like we had during COVID. Maybe this works in a market where there's only one month of inventory, but in this specific market, there's the need to have those buyer's agent help us. So make sure that you talk to them about things that matter. And then on the other hand, if they go, look, I'm gonna absolutely not pay for this because that's what they want to do. Make sure that you tell them, okay, no problem. This is the plan that we have. This is the marketing strategy that we're going to deploy. And we're going to talk about that. But this is the marketing strategy that we're going to deploy when we don't pay for that buyer's commission. And this is the financial strategy. This is how we're going to market the house financially. And look, the financial piece is such a critical component of it because there's not enough agents talking about this, right? Look, we're in a market right now where people, the, the thing, the obstacle that we need to overcome is financial, okay? It's interest rates, it's monthly payments, it's rising home prices, it's those types of things. And those things nowadays, and this is hard to get in people's brains a lot of times, but those things are more important than the pretty kitchen and proximity to work and things of that nature, okay? Again, um, every market's different, but in our market, we are in more of a balanced market. So that is a critical thing. Now, another thing, is that if you missed our webinar last week, go ahead and scan that QR code because we did a buyer's agent edition of this. And in that buyer's agent edition, we actually put together a full buyer's uh, agent uh, or buyer presentation deck for you guys to use. It is critical. Now, this for the most part doesn't exist, but it is critical moving forward. And I feel this is one of the greatest opportunities to grow your business is to have a really strong buyer presentation and super importantly, a strong post-closing situation. We need to document the advantage of using you, okay? There are, whatever, 20,000 real estate agents in and around Southwest Florida, and we have to make sure that you stand out. And I got to tell you, when I talk to agents, why should I use you versus the other 19,000 and change? The answers are things like, I build good rapport, I provide good service. Folks, those are not tangible things. We have to do a better job. So scan that QR code. It'll bring you directly to a recording of last week's presentation. Make sure you watch it. Make sure you share it. Okay. Now, here is a strategy that is talked about a lot. We talk about it a lot, but I don't feel it is laid out in a tactical manner. So I had a person that was looking to put in an offer on that listing and they wanted to offer $20,000 less. I put together this total cost analysis and what I have on the left is the property as it sits, 20% down, sample rates, et cetera. Okay, what the numbers look like with a $20,000 price reduction is only going to shave less than $110 a month. The third column shows, okay, if you offer full price, but ask the seller to kick in 3% towards your closing costs, we could do a buy down, buying your interest rate down to maybe five and a quarter. Now we have a savings of over $370 a month. And then the final column to the right shows how much would we have to drop this price to have the same $370 a month uh, savings. And that answer is that we'd have to drop that price from $359 all the way down to $290,000. Think about it from a listing strategy perspective, right? You look, what is, what is marketing if you don't want to make Basically, you want to make the proper the property that you're listing or that people are listing with you have an unfair advantage in the market. This is the one tool that gives you an unfair advantage when you are marketing this listing because especially if the seller now it's not paying the buyer's commission, you have the ability to show the seller how they can maximize not only the you know how attractive this purchase is for everybody but now you can maximize the pool of people that can qualify for a property like this, because this is what this actually does. As lenders, we approve people based on the potential payment of that property. We don't care about the actual price of the property. We care about the payment that that property has attached to. So if I have a listing that is $359,000, but it has the same payment as a listing that's $290,000, 
Now, not only the people that qualify for the $360,000 can qualify for this property, but also everybody else that qualifies to at least $290,000. So it increases the pool of buyers that somebody can have. And look, let me tell you something. If you show this to a listing, to, a, to a, somebody that's interested in selling, and you show them not just this as a reactive approach of, hey, if the property doesn't sell, this is what we're going to do. But you show them, look, if you want to really have a competitive advantage in this market, now that we're trying to take this, we're going to be able to offer this and make this listing a lot more exciting for everybody and increase the pool of buyers, it's a different conversation that they're having. And at the end of the day, what you want to do every time you talk to a seller is tell them, look, sell selling with me gives you a competitive advantage over selling with anybody else. Look, guys, it is absolutely critical that we are having different conversations. Okay, I've been talking about this for a while. It's never been more important than now. We need you need to differentiate yourself from the others. So you have to ask yourself, okay, my competitors are going to walk into this uh, listing presentation and sit down with the seller. What are they going to talk about? Well, they're going to talk about the market. They're going to talk about their marketing plan. They're going to talk about all of those basic things. The question is, of course, how do we separate ourselves? Um, so here's an example, okay? Let's say we have, so this is something I call the debt consolidation move up buyer. Okay, you have walked into plenty of listing presentations, I'm sure, and there are a ton of people that want to sell the house, but they're concerned. I'm sitting at 3% now. I'm sitting at 3% rate on my current house. The new rate's 6.75 or seven and a quarter, whatever it is, okay? So let's say six years ago, somebody bought a house for 500 grand. They put down 20%, which is $400,000, okay? Now, let's say that their a sales price, the home value today has jumped up from 500,000 to 695,000 while their loan balance has dropped to 343. When they're done selling everything, the cost to sell the whole thing, we end up with an available down payment of $305,000. Now, um, the question becomes then what happens if they wanna buy a new house for 850 bucks a month, okay? And here's the problem. Their monthly payment goes up $2,572. And other listing agents go over that math with people and the seller goes, yep, Either I can't do that or I won't do that. Because let's Not be honest, that is a huge jump in payment. But here's the angle, okay? <clears throat> Consumer debt in America is at an all-time high. Home equity line of credit debt in America is at an all-time high. We surpassed a trillion dollars worth of credit card debt last year. That is, we've never been close to it. That credit card debt in this country has gone up hundreds of billions, that's with a B, of dollars per year. So what if instead of taking the entire $300,000 down payment or $300,000 net, $300, net and putting it down on the next house, what about if a conversation took place and it was discovered that this person was carrying $100,000 worth of debt and making payments of over $2,000 a month on it? The strategy goes like this, okay? And these are the types of reasons why we're being zoomed in to listing presentations at an extraordinarily high rate. What if we took that $100,000 and wiped out all that debt, okay? And then put $100,000 less down on the new home. Well, as you can see, by paying off that debt, we're wiping out $2,286. In fact, now with the debt consolidation, this person can move up and their, their monthly outlay only increases by $286 a month. This is a game changer. Absolutely. So what this means is, basically, you're able to buy a better house, a more expensive house, you get all the life quality that you want, but even with a higher rate, the actual payment for this person's livelihood, the actual monthly payment only goes up less than $300 a month. Guys, these are the type of conversations that you need to have with your listings because there's a lot of people that are not converting their listing because of this. And I understand that as agents, we're not necessarily used to talking about the financial piece of things. Well, two things. One, you have to, right? Because the biggest blockage right now, the biggest obstacle is this. It's nothing else. And number two, take advantage of the fact that you can use us for things like that. You don't need to learn this. You can just say, look, 
we have a debt consolidation strategy for people that are trying to sell a house and buy a house that's more expensive that allows them to not really or change minimally the amount of expenses that they have every single month. And then let us have that conversation with them. I promise you, you're going to convert a lot more listings. And look, guys, we got to take a um, we got to take a page out of the builder's playbook. OK, Theo Horton is obviously the biggest builder in the country. What are they selling nowadays? Are they selling kitchens? Are they selling? No, they're selling rates, right? If you go to Deal Horton, the first thing they're going to talk to you about is here's the amount of money we're going to give you to, to lower the amount of, of out-of-pocket at closing. And here's the amount of money we're going to give you to buy down the interest rate to 5% or whatever it is. Folks, they know what they're doing. This isn't intentional, okay? So <clears throat> let's look at a second uh, scenario where you could have a differentiating type of conversation, okay? A lot of people don't know this, but all FHA and VA loans are assumable, okay? And I've been speaking on this a little bit and not surprisingly, the agents that have worked with this are picking up more business from it. So um, let's say you walk into a sales house and they're currently sitting at a rate of 3%, okay? And they have a VA loan, let's say. Now VA loans, you don't need to be a veteran to assume a VA loan. Okay, there's some caveats that we can talk about off, off uh, like outside the presentation. But so a buyer comes and says, look, there's a $343,000 balance on this mortgage at 3%. You could assume it. The house is currently listed for $695. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a problem, man. Everybody thinks, and frankly, a lot of agents think, that the only way to bridge that gap is for the buyer to write a check at closing for $352,000. And guys, that's just not accurate. Okay, we have a product that's a home equity line of credit for purchase where we could go up to 90, in some cases 95, but let's keep it at 90 for this example. So the way it works is this, okay? They assume the mortgage of $343,000. We give them a new home equity line of credit at closing for 282.5, and now their down payment is just 10% or $69,500, okay? How many of your competitors are walking into that listing, talking to them, about the uh, the importance of their current mortgage, right? Can it be assumable? How can you advertise that? And by the way, how can you use that to sell that house at the absolute highest possible realistic price using that advantage? Yeah, because now you're selling that house at a 3% rate that doesn't exist in this market. So look, again, we need to start selling houses the way that people buy houses. The way that people buy houses, the way that people make the decision to buy a house is financially. We say it all the time here. You look for houses visually, you fall in love with houses emotionally, but the decision to buy a house is a financial decision. Show your in your listing presentation how you're going to sell to the current buyer the financial advantage of buying this house over any other house in the market. Okay, now let's talk about a third strategy. Come on, slides work with me here. Now let's talk about a third strategy to pick up listings to create some more inventory for yourself. Okay, now this is a little high level. Okay, but um, everybody can put their answers in the chat. I have a question for you guys. If you owned your house as a primary residence for three of the last five years, and you sell the home and walk away with half a million dollars, let's say you're a married couple, how much do you have to pay in capital gains taxes? Okay, so you lived in the house for three to five years. I'm, and I'm interrupting Scott real quick. First of all, don't let that go by you. You need to understand how the capital gain taxes work. If you don't understand it, we'll send you some handouts about that. That is the easiest call that you can make to everybody that you've sold a home or that you sold, you sold a home for in the past two years. Because you can call them and tell them, hey, congratulations, you hit the mark where well, you can save a lot of money on taxes. Anyways, bye. all right, Scott. He interrupts me a lot. It's an insecurity issue. I think his mom didn't hold him enough as a baby, but hey, I'm sure it's some good therapy. He could work through this. So back on track here. So um, uh, hopefully everybody answered zero. All right. If you are married and you lived a home in a home as a primary residence for three of the last five years, you are able to get up to half a million dollars tax free. And that's the tax law that the strategy is based around. What I've seen a lot of people do over the last couple of years because of these low interest rates is when they moved out of the house, they didn't necessarily sell their home, but they converted it to a rental. Okay, and what, so let's say on the left, let's say my 
bought a house uh, 10 years ago for 500,000. Uh, seven years ago, they lived in it for three years. Okay. And then they turned it into rental. When they turned it into rental, the house was worth 703. Okay. And let's say it was a rental for five years. And they eventually sold it for 899. Well, when that happens, we're going to go off the purchase price of 500,000. They have not lived in the house for three of the last five years. It was rented for five years. So now we're going to go the original purchase price is 500. The uh, sales price is 899. That's taxable capital gains of 399,000. Let's assume a 32% tax bracket. Uncle Sam is going to get $127,000 of that money. That is a huge thing. But what if on your listing presentation, you discuss this, okay? And then obviously you call your clients that this applies to separately. But what if on your listing presentation, you explained, you, you Zoomed us in and we explained that let's go through the same scenario, but now when they convert their house to a rental, they sell it three years later, okay? And they sell it for 813. Now we're within that tax, we're within that tax code, okay? They sell it two years later. We're within that tax code now where they can now sell the house for 813 and have no capital gains tax. So let's say they sell it for 813, they buy a new house for 813. And they sell that two years later, same timeline for 899. Well, guess what? What they call the tax basis, okay, which is the starting number, the starting number now is no longer 500,000. The starting number now is 813. Okay, so at 813, they sell it for 899. Now we have capital gains tax of $86,000. We are saving them over $100,000 in taxes. And guys, I don't want this really critical point to get lost on you. The point of this is not necessary. The value in this is not just doing it. The value in this is having this conversation with every potential prospect you talk to and here's why. The concept differentiates you. Whether or not they utilize it is irrelevant. It's the same thing. You should never talk to a buyer. You should never go on a listing presentation without talking about the buy down. Whether or not they do the buy down is irrelevant. This is a differentiating factor. And it is absolutely critical that we take advantage of that. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk about post-closing and Ed... I, I think this is the most important part. I think this is super important because nobody talks about what they're going to do after. And look, we've talked about it with buyers. It's, it's the same thing applies with sellers. The real value that a real estate professional can bring to the table is not just the marketing piece. It's not just writing a contract, but it's what value they're going to bring for the next 30 years to come, right? How are you going to help me afterwards? And if the stats is true that the majority of people are going well, to- it, it, he's not the only one that's allowed to interrupt here, okay? <laughs> here's, here's the deal, guys. Let me frame this up for everybody first, okay? We all understand it's important to stay in touch with our past clients. We all understand that we pretty much suck at it. I, I can't remember the last time I sat down with an agent. I like asking this question where somebody goes, nope, I hit that out of the park. We all understand that we could do a better job. And here's the thing. If we're moving into a world where we need to um, communicate our value, there is nobody that it's easier to communicate our value to than somebody who we've already worked with and they've seen and experienced our value. Because the truth is, a lot of the value that an agent provides does seem a little intangible until you're in the midst of it. So marketing to our past client database and really, really providing value. And we're going to show you how we do that. Really providing value. I'm not talking about I send them recipes. I'm not talking about I send them a closing anniversary gift. None of that crap. Real value that moves the needle. That is where we have to focus a lot of our time and attention moving forward. Ed? Why is that? <laughs> no, this is really where we need to quantify the value. And look, Scott said it. It's, it's very hard to say, well... You know, I'm just going to be with you for the future and I'm going to be your best friend afterwards. And I, look, guys, uh, we're talking about real money here. We're talking about a real investment. You need to be the person that helps them manage that asset. We always talk in the mortgage side how it is basically mortgage malpractice for us to give somebody the largest debt of their life and simply disappear. Well, you guys are giving them the largest asset of their life. 
Help them maximize that. Talk to them about how you're going to help them after closing with their payment, with their insurance, how you're going to help them get the homestead exemption and explain how that works. For somebody that sold a house and is buying another house, tell them how portability works in the state of Florida, because just with the portability, that's more than worth anybody's commission, right? Tell them that you're going to do a tax assessment every single year and let them know when it's time for them to sell and when they can maximize those gains. Guys, there's so many things that you can give value on after closing. Think about 1031 exchanges and capital gain exclusions, all these things that that's when somebody that bought a house and unlock home ownership, and now at this point has the ability to have some money because they just sold their property and they have some money to invest, tell them how they can maximize that and save money, especially when it comes to taxes. You guys are in the best position to do it and you need to have a little bit of tools in order to show them that and then send them to the right person. And look, it is absolutely critical. Come on, slide. Oops. That is unfortunate. Hold on, guys. All right. See, we're human. Okay. Um, so it is said, it is widely said that moving is the third most stressful time in a person's life behind death and divorce. I don't know that I consider it quite that stressful, but either way, it is stressful. So let's start to change our mindset away from this. And guys, I, I, if you could take one thing from this presentation, I hope it's this. Let's question everything that is status quo. Let's stop... Let's stop doing things that are, well, that's just the way things are done. Like, yeah, moving just sucks. No, why don't we really work on trying to fix those things because that's the value. So we have a relocation app that we provide to all of our clients from this app that is free to the clients, not to us. Um, they could do everything you see on your screen. They could book movers. They could uh, set up utilities. They could forward the mail. They could shop around for things like insurance, home automation, um, you know, internet providers, all of those things. And we can really help them. And, and again, guys, don't spring this on them when they go on the contract. This all needs to be part of your initial consultation with buyers and sellers. Obviously, we're focusing on sellers now, but this needs to be part of your initial consultation. Like, hey, I know this sucks, but if you work with me, here's how I could make it better, right? Whether it's suck less or make it pleasant or whatever, but this is these are the types of things that we got to start thinking about doing at a very, very high level. The other thing that we need to talk about is how, like Ed said, to maximize their asset. Look, 81% of people retiring in America today have 100% of their uh, wealth in their home's equity. Now, look, I uh, when I was growing up... <clears throat> um, we had a very rocky financial lives. A lot of people have heard the story, but what a lot of people haven't heard is the ending of the story, okay? <clears throat> My grandfather was born um, in 1909 and uh, he uh, lived through the Great Depression. He, he remembers coming home from school and apparently during the Great Depression, you could get a free month of rent at a lot of places and he would come home from school and there'd be a sign on the door. His name was Samuel. Samuel, we're now living at this address. Please go there. Okay. It's not like we had, there were cell phones back in the 20s. Um, and he lived his entire life poor. My grandfather died when he was 91 years old. And uh, I, my grandfather was, was a very amazing guy because his, his mental facility stayed so strong. And he remembers horse and buggies on the cobblestone streets of Brooklyn to people living in outer space. Like think of the perspective of that. And I remember one time uh, my grandfather suffered from a, a type of depression that would come and go. And when it came, he'd live with us. So my whole life, Gramps was in our house or not in our house. And I remember one, one day as a teenager, I come into the, the kitchen and he was crying. And I got so sad. I'm like, Gramps, what's what's wrong? And he looked at me and he said, Scott, it's not supposed to go this way. And I said, Gramps, it's, I thought he was talking about his health. I said, Gramps, I, we just love having you around. It's all good. He goes, no. He goes, I had to ask your mother for money again. A father 
is not supposed to be a burden to his daughter in the later years, Scott. I, I, I just wish I understood. My grandfather died, like I said, when he was 91, still living with us, poor. My parents, after having lost a fortune, also died broke. When my parent, when my mom died, they were living in a house that was that was mine because they couldn't afford to buy a house. They had no assets to speak of. Um, my brother and I were helping them out on a pretty regular basis. After my father died, my after my mother died, my father ended up moving in with one of my uncles. He died there, equally broke. Guys, the the path in this country for money is a bad one. And I got into this business so I could change that path for as many people as possible. But guys, that's on you too. Okay. We cannot, it is irresponsible for us to give somebody an asset that literally is the make or break difference between dying like my family has or not, and not give them tools to maximize that value. And uh, Homebinder is a tool that, again, we provide to all of our clients. We can provide it to your clients. And this tool is designed to maximize the ownership of this asset, okay? It gives them proactive maintenance reminders, okay? It could track all of the projects they do on the house, okay? It can, if you use it and it tracks everything, when you're ready to sell the house, you could print out a seller's report of every nickel you've ever spent on the house, who you spent it with and what you spent it on. This is going to help maximize the resale value of the house, okay? Um, it checks for appliance recalls. You could store all of your documents there in inventory videos. And look, we all know in Southwest Florida, sometimes hurricanes hit us and it's a bad thing. We all need to take inventory videos. You could store them here. It has a list of service providers. Folks, this is basically like an operating system for your home that, um, that we could provide to your clients on behalf of both of us for free. And whether you use our service or you invest in your own service, doesn't matter to me, obviously better to use us, but um, guys, we have to elevate our game to this level where we're starting to make a real meaningful impact on their journey as a homeowner. Now, the next thing we have to talk about is how we're going to um, help them manage the, uh, the debt and the wealth. And look, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite tools that we're providing, not only because it's the favorite tool that our clients get, but it's a tool that I play with a lot when it comes to my own properties. And this is the thing. This is a tool that gives them a home real estate report card every single month. What's cool about this tool is that it tells you the information that you want to know, like how much my property has changed in value. And God knows that property is changing value a lot here in Southwest Florida. It also tell me, it also tracks, okay, how much I paid towards interest, how much I paid towards principal. If I want to put extra money towards the principal, how much money am I going to save over the life of the loan? But it tells me, hey, a property like this one can rent for this much on an Airbnb on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. And this is the number of nights that we are expecting this property to rent on Airbnb. Guys, this property, this, this tool teaches your clients little by little to start thinking as investors. I promise you a lot of the clients that you have are buying their first home and they're thinking that at some point they're going to buy an investment property. At some point, they're going to turn this into an investment property. This is constantly giving them information every single month about how they can do that and take advantage of that. What's beautiful with this tool is it also has a tune value button right under the value. And this is what we tell our clients. Hey, this is the thing. The value that you see here, it's great, but it's not perfect because the market has a lot of little nuances. And especially here, there's going to be a lot of micro markets. So what we want you to do is every six months, you're going to click on where it says tune value. And that's going to send your agent a request for them to call you and give you a proper CMA. So every six months or every time that this client is interested in really knowing what their house is worth, they can click on that and they immediately get an alert or you immediately get an alert to call them and to go over a proper CMA with them. Guys, 
This is a way to stay in front of your clients every single month without you having to spend the time and do it manually. And look, like I always like to do, folks, let's talk about the um, let's talk about the business component of this. Okay. Ed says that this is our client's favorite tool. How do we know that? It's simple. Look at that open rate. Last month, the open rate was 84%. That's staggering. Even more staggering is out of the 436 past clients that I have in, uh, that's a screenshot for mine, uh, 436 past clients, 51 of them have turned themselves into buyers. And what you see on the left side of your screen is every single time somebody clicks on something, you're able to see exactly what they're clicking on. So you can really stay in touch with your clients in a very, very meaningful way. All right, next. So again, meaningful way. What is meaningful about staying in touch with the clients? You have to think from a very selfish standpoint as a homeowner, what does a homeowner need in order to maximize that? And we talked about this a little bit, but it's a lot of things that they don't teach us in school, right? When you graduate in school and you think that you're very smart and you think that because you make money, you know all those these things, that doesn't mean that you know these things. So we need to teach them. We need to show the clients how they can maximize the home ownership. And this is the list. I got to interrupt you one more time. That's really important. Okay. Um. By the way, I'm sure everybody but Ed has noticed the typo on the screen. I too noticed the typo on the screen, but I left it there because I want to celebrate the fact that English is Ed's third language. And I think it's super important to make fun of him in a public setting. So um, I just wanted to point that out to everybody. <laughs> it talks is about the homeowner's needs and what the homeowner needs. I don't know. It's complicated. Look, the point is, these are things that you should be sending to your clients yearly. Because this is the thing, the capital gain is to ex ex exclusion. It's important to know, the, but your client is really not going to pay attention and try to internalize it until it applies to them. These are the 15 things that we're showing our clients every single year. We have the handouts for all 15. Make sure that instead of you having to research and put it together and all those things, at the end of this, there's a QR code. Go through the QR code and we will have a meeting with you and send you all of this. We can even make it so your beautiful picture is there so you can send it to your clients on your own as well. All right. Now, the next thing we got to think about is this. And I talked about this at the beginning that we are most likely going to be in a situation where uh, more agents are double dipping deals, which means potentially double the work for the same amount of money. So how do we combat that? We have to combat that, combat that by maximizing our efficiencies, okay? And this is something that Ed and I spend a lot of time and a lot of energy on our business doing. And we'll go over some of those things with you by using virtual assistants and everything else. But one of the things we need to do is understand the types of things we can provide to people that again are going to be meaningful. So when people are out looking at properties, um, we can run numbers on those properties pre-inspection. What about the, um, you know, what about the insurance quotes and everything else? So look, here is an example of what we can do for you and your clients. You can do it yourself. But um, if uh, we have a client that's going out to look at three different houses, we are sending them this type of breakdown before they go see the houses. So if you're working with sellers and the sellers are thinking about buying something else, we have to be running numbers for the homes that they might potentially buy. Again, this is a conversation that most listing agents are not having with the clients. And this is an easy way for you to stand out. The other thing that's on the screen that's important is, you know, I talk to clients a lot about HOA costs. It doesn't seem like there's enough agents talking about what's included in the HOA costs. Is it lawn care? Is it nothing? Is it lawn care, internet, and three other things? There's a real difference in the value of that. It's really, really critical that we uh, that we focus on that and explain it. Guys, the value of showing the numbers is extremely important. Do the same thing when a client gets an offer, right? When a client gets an offer that's lowball, show this not only to the buyer that's sending you this, but show the client, hey, with these three offers that you receive, this is how much money you're going to get net. Show them the numbers. The beautiful thing with this is Scott say, oh, you can have us do it or you can do it yourself. Don't do it yourself. Don't waste your time doing these things yourself. This is the time for you to lean into your tribe. If we're part of your tribe, we have to do this for you. If your lender is not doing this for you, then we're not your lender. And that's the first mistake you've made. Okay. 
All right. All right. The other thing is we need to maximize the efficiencies by using automations and virtual assistants. And look, I'm going to be completely honest. This is something that we had started this journey about 24 months ago where we started using virtual assistants to, you know, to maximize and to be able to automate a lot of the things that we're doing. Things like asking for insurance quotes, title communication, introductions to inspectors and answering all those questions, the list of the necessary inspections that you need to do and the weekly updates that if you think about it, that can be achieved with a little bit of upfront time and a little bit of upfront investment with both a good automation system and the use of virtual assistants if you want to take it to the next level and do a little bit of customization. Look, if you're interested in how we're using this, we're more than happy to share. Make sure that you scan the QR code at the end and we can have a very, we can show you the back end of our system and show you how we built it. All right. And I don't know about everybody else, but I don't want to see your back end. But uh, but looking at the uh, automation system sounds interesting. What about the back end of that one? <laughs> um, and then the next thing we need to do a better job of is we need to leverage technology. Look, let me say this. The vast majority of real estate agents that I've met and talked to are running a job. The really successful agents, all of them that I've talked to, are running a business. And folks, I know sometimes it's hard to get your mind there, but... We have to look at this, that you are a business owner. And I know we all say we are, but a business owner needs to have a tech stack. A business owner needs to have systems, needs to have automations. These are requirements in the business. So um, we need to use technology to make sure that we're doing the annual financial reviews. Here's what most people do. They go, I'm just going to commit to doing them this year. Look, if you've committed to doing something again and again and failed to do so, that's literally the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So we need to understand that with the technology stack that we use, annual financial reviews are automated. Post-closing CMA requests are automated. Break-even analyses are automated. It is absolutely critical that we leverage that. Okay. The other thing that we could do for you that's really important is we can provide you with buy-down strategies. When you get a home listed, send it to us. We can market that against all of our pre-approved buyers that we have all over the country. I think we're currently sitting at like 170 buyers, just us. And then there's other branches throughout the country. So it is really, really critical that you're leaning on us as a partner. Look, when I look at this situation, purely selfishly. Here's what I come up with. I come up with the fact that there's three pieces of it. Number one, as a buyer's agent, you don't have to worry about putting together the presentation and the tech and everything because we do it for you. You just need to be on the calls, okay? As a listing agent, so many of the other tasks that you would normally have to do when you're double dipping a deal, we do as a normal part of our business. And thirdly, and I would argue more importantly, Never before has it been more important for the lender and realtor to be one cohesive unit. It is absolutely critical, okay? And as a true partner, okay, we can be zoomed in on your listing presentations to talk about buy-down strategies. We could talk about all of the other strategies that we shared with you today. Look, you guys going out and learning all of this is ridiculous. Um, I mean, we do this 60, 70 hours a week, and we're still learning new things every day. So lean on us as a partner. And that's going to take us to um, our next section that I want Ed to talk about, which is building your personal brand. More important than ever. Look, guys, like he says, it's more important than ever to have your personal brand because at the end of the day, people are doing business with you. And it's not about your team anymore. It's not about the brokerage that you're in. It's about what are you bringing to the table. It's about why dedication I get with you. And with more competition, there's going to be, a, you need to have a bigger microphone when it comes to who you are and what you bring to the table. And the easiest and cheapest way to do it is by building your brand. Now, one thing that we do and one thing that's the most effective way to do is to build your personal brand through video marketing. We do a lot of things like content days, which... I hope some of you have gone to our content days where you show up, we give you scripts that are all informational scripts and we can edit them 
and post them for you. These things are super important right now. And you want to position yourself out there as the person that has the answer to these questions, as the person that has the knowledge. Because if you're out there talking about taxes, if you're out there talking about how can people maximize their assets, if you're about if you're out there showing people, for example, that if they buy a house cash, if they refinance the house in 90 days, they can still deduct that interest on that purchase. That is what's going to make somebody go, oh my God, I have learned more with watching this person in two minutes than my whole life talking to a realtor. This is what you want to do. Look, a couple of things to, to think about here that's very interesting is that, um, is this, okay? The way it used to be 10 years ago, if your past client was at a business function and a colleague needed to uh, needed a real estate agent. They went, oh my goodness, you got to call Mary. Mary was great. Here's Mary's card. 10 years ago, homeboy goes home and calls Mary. Today, he goes home and what does he do before calling Mary? That's right. He Googles her. And here's the rub. Here's the rub. The rub is, he will. if he doesn't like what he reads, he will take the advice of total strangers over that of his friend's family members, and colleagues. So the old-fashioned goal of I need to build a referral-based business is dying. What you need to build is your brand. And here's another thing that's really interesting. The people that come to us from social media, okay, we do probably $25, $30 million a year in social media um, business without really paid ads. And uh, the people that come to us for social media, that our followers, trust us more than anybody else. Quick story. I had a kid come to me a couple of years ago and he wanted to meet in the office. It's unusual, uh, unusual even, even a couple of years ago, but either way he comes in, we sit down and I'm like, how can I help you? He goes, look, I'm deciding between buying a house or not buying a house. And I wanted to sit down with you because I know you're going to be honest and shoot it straight with me. And I was so intrigued by that. I just looked at him and I said, how? How could you possibly know that we met six minutes ago and I feed my family by selling mortgages? And he goes, look, man, I've been following you for, for a while. I heard enough of your stories. I just know you're going to be straight with me and you're the person I have to talk to. Ladies and gentlemen, the best way to communicate our value is to build up our personal brand. Okay. Think of the brands that you interact with now all the time. These are brands where you don't question the price. Okay, you understand the value you're getting. And uh, I just wanted to interject. I want to let Ed finish the slide, but I just wanted to interject and kind of frame those two points out for you because building a personal brand will increase your trust and increase your commission rates too, which is a win. Look, guys, and even to do it as a defensive uh, approach, you don't want to go meet with somebody, do a fantastic listening presentation, and for that person to learn from a TikTok and you know ask you a bunch of questions about things that you didn't teach them. Make sure that you're putting those videos out there in order to you know continue with the theme of making life easy for you. And in addition to that, making sure that you're automating things. The easiest way is to do what we do with contentday.ai. Content Day provides you the scripts, we provide you the editing, and we even post it for you. If you're interested in that, like I said, you can scan the code at the end and we can talk about how we can make all of this much easier for you. Okay, and now we have the code. So look, everybody, I want to set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with as many of you as are interested. Uh, this code will take you to either Ed's calendar or mine. And, uh, and in this meeting, we could go over, um, we could go deep on any topic that we discussed today. I know some of the um, some of the financial structuring things probably is going to require more conversation uh, to understand it. Again, we'll happily present it, but we want you to have a deeper understanding as you see fit. Um, we could also talk to you about how our content days work, uh, maybe get you registered for any upcoming events in that respect, and then also provide you with all of the tools and things that we have Again, it could be co-branded, so you could start swiping and deploying, okay? Um, s and marketing, steal and distribute, okay? Feel free to steal the information from us and distribute it and level up your game to the next uh, to the next level. And look, I understand it is not common for an agent to go, 
I have a listing appointment. I better call my lender. I understand that. But that was the way it's always been. Moving forward, if the, if you adopt that mindset and you zoom us in, your conversion rates will increase 100%. And we are happy to do it. Guys, take advantage of this because look, going through this path alone, it's going to be a much more difficult path. And I said it before, and I'm going to say it again, the team dynamic of the lender with the realtor, it's more important now than ever because together we're stronger, right? Showing the beautiful houses and all the things that you do with the power of the numbers that support all those things. It's a lot, it's a much more powerful combination than doing just one or the other. Guys, we need to get together on this. And like I said before, you guys right now are under attack. And when you guys are under attack, we are under attack too. We all need to elevate our game together. And we are providing all of these tools to you because we believe that with these tools, we're all not only going to survive, but we're going to thrive in this market. And we want to thrive together with you. Questions? Yeah. Any questions? Anything that you want to throw in the chat? Yeah. Everybody, look, anybody who has any questions, please go ahead and throw it in the chat. Um, we have that up. We can monitor it and answer those questions uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. So, um, look, I am, uh, this sounds weird, guys. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this change because one of the one of the benefits that came out of the, the, the whole mortgage meltdown and Dodd-Frank and all that stuff is this. The public's perception of my industry rose heavily. And it has stayed elevated. And I think there's an opportunity for this, this shift in the business to do the same thing. I think there's an opportunity for the shift in the business to cause the public perception of a real estate professional to be actually a real estate professional, as opposed to everybody and their grandmother has a real estate license down here. So that is the opportunity. And, uh, and guys, that about fills us up on time. We are uh we are at twelve fifty nine. Ed, again, we're gonna drop the uh, we're gonna drop the content day registration link in the chat. So click on that if you're interested in the next content day. We also dropped a couple of links in the chat as well. I hope to see you on our next classes, guys. All right, see you soon, everybody.